and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and today I'm going to be sharing with you five easy care houseplants that I think pretty much anyone can take care of. These five types of plants are ones in my home that I feel like I never really have to worry about. They just do their thing. I don't need to be fussing with them all the time. I don't need to worry about whether their humidity is right or whether they're getting enough water or anything. They just are reliable and grow pretty easily without that much extra intervention from me. Another good thing about all of these plants is that you can find most of them for fairly cheap. The most basic versions of all of these plants are in pretty much everyone's price range. They're very affordable. They can be found in loads of different places. Pretty much every sort of garden center will have them. Even big box stores and supermarkets sometimes have them. Though I would always suggest buying at a garden center or a nursery or a local small business rather than like Morrison's or Ralph's or wherever you buy plants sometimes from the supermarket because they don't treat their plants as well. So they're good for people who want to expand their collection without adding like that much extra effort to their plant care routine, but also beginners who want some new plant suggestions. And of course, this is my own opinion. Some people might find some of these harder than others. It really just depends on the person in their house, but these are, in my opinion, five easy care house plants. Really quickly, before we get started, I just want to say if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and write down in the comments more things you'd like me to talk about, plenty wise, and subscribe for more videos. Right, let's get on into it. First plant, pothos. They are fantastic. Pothos were one of the first types of plants that I got into. That's just because they're so stunning. Like, I love the way they trail down. You can also train them to climb up if you want them to have bigger leaves or you've got a moss pole or a trellis or something. They can climb up as well and they just look fantastic. This one here is a Marble Queen Pothos, Epipremnum Aurum, but there's loads of different types with loads of different variegations. So you can pretty much find a type of variegation that matches what you want. They're also happy in most light conditions. I have most of my pothos up on a high shelf and they're totally fine there. I'd say they probably get medium to low indirect light most of the day, especially when it's cloudy in England. They're not getting all that much light. And I mean, look at this. It has grown so much since I originally got it. I'll put a picture here of when I originally got it. But since then it has grown immensely. They just keep pushing out new growth oftentimes even in the winter as well, which is another reason to love these ones. Ooh, got a broken leaf. Meh, sad leaf. Another really great thing about pothos is that they will tell you when they're thirsty. They will wilt and kind of get a little bit sad and soft. That just means they want water and give them water and they will perk right back up again, no problem. Also, they're super easy to propagate because they've got like vines with nodes and stuff. All you have to do is chop a little bit off, prune them if they get too long. You can propagate those pieces and put them back at the top, give them to friends, sell them, whatever you fancy doing, easy propagation. Overall, I'd say pothos probably is one of my favorite types of plant just because they are so, so easy and low maintenance and just all around great easy plant. Next up, we have the ZZ plant, the Zamiococcus zamifolia. I think that's how you pronounce it. As well as the ZZ Raven. I'm lumping these in together because they're essentially the same thing. They can tolerate barely any light. I keep mine downstairs probably two meters, six feet, or even further away from a northeast facing window. So they are really not getting that much bright light. I'd say it's probably low indirect, medium at best. They're thriving. I got so many new shoots last year on my ZZ Raven. They just love it. Also, they don't need all that much water. They much prefer their soil to be dry. They are super drought tolerant. They just don't want to be watered that much, which is great. You can kind of set them and forget them and not worry about them. Also, they like to be super root bound. So 
you don't need to repot them all that often. Like you can see, this one, it's like warping the pot. There's like a massive bulge going on right here where it's warped the pot. That's because they like being root bound. I don't have to worry about repotting it because they actually like being a bit tighter in their space. So it's just less work for me. It's brilliant. ZZ plants are slow growers, but they can grow quite tall. So they make for a really great statement piece that you really don't have to worry that much about. So yeah, ZZ plants, they're a good and easy peasy low maintenance plant. So this next plant, mine is pretty big, so it's gonna be a pain to put in shot, but. Monstera Deliciosa. They are so hardy. They can tolerate quite a lot. They're pretty drought tolerant. I mean, you still need to water them, but they can handle not being watered for a little while. They'll just wilt their leaves a bit and you can water them, perk right back up again. This one managed a battle with thrips. This is probably one of the plants that had the worst thrips in my collection and still beautiful looking fine. You can see there's stems where I've physically cut off leaves because they had thrips on them. And now it's got a brand new leaf popping out of it. So they just, they just can handle things, which is brilliant. I love when my plants can handle, not like abuse. I'm not trying to abuse my plants, but a little bit of roughing. They, they don't need to be fawned over all the time. Monsters are also great because they can grow massive. Like as you can see, this is, a pretty decently sized plant, pretty large. I've got it on a moss pole because if I didn't, it would just be sprawling out everywhere. Like I've seen them on Instagram in people's houses, just on huge, massive moss poles in botanical gardens and like out in nature, they just grow wildly up trees with huge leaves. Like, I don't even know how to describe how big they are. Like if my other arm was up here with me, massive leaves, huge. And with their like fenestrated leaves, chef's kiss, it's so good. But overall they can handle quite a lot and they can come back from some things like root rot and stuff a lot easier than some other house plants can, which is brilliant. Easy plant number four is Sansevieria or snake plants. I know that they're now technically Dracaena plants, but you know, Sansevieria is what I will call them because that's what I know and love them as. These are seriously one of the best set and forget plants. They don't need that much water. Actually, they don't want that much water. I only water mine when it's fully, fully dry. Also, they don't need all that much light. Yes, of course, they will grow more if you're giving it more light, but they can handle like medium to low indirect as well. I again have all of my Sansevierias downstairs where they're not getting that much light and they're fine. They will still grow and produce babies and stuff even in not the highest light conditions, which is great because you can define them up, give them to your friends, sell them, do whatever you want, propagate and just have more plants. It's ideal. They grow, give you babies, and you get more plants. Another good thing about snake plants is that there are so many different varieties, so many different leaf colorings. Like no matter what your sort of decor style is, you can pretty much find the right Sansevieria for you. If you don't like the flat leaves, they're cylindrical ones. If you don't like this sort of light bluey green, get a yellow one. There's just so many options that how can you not find one for your space. My mom has one of these. She is not that into houseplants. And after watching my snake plant video, she was like, I can do that. She's got one and it's growing fantastically. So like, if my mom can do it, you can do it. Go get yourself a snake plant because they're great. And you can use them as a scratching post if you wanna scratch your face because it actually feels really good. Last but certainly not least is vining philodendrons. Vining philodendrons are a super duper easy plant. This one lives down in my bathroom. Not many plants live in my bathroom because it doesn't get that much light. It's got a tiny window, no direct sunlight at all comes through this window. It is dark down there. This one growing like crazy still. I have chopped and propped it 
probably two times now and it is still doing great. This one also survived the thrips attack of 2020, got thrips, I got rid of them, still doing great. There are also a few different varieties of these as well, like a Mikan's, Lemon Lime, Brazil, Cream Splash, different varieties, different sort of looks that you can get in your home. These also have super easy propagation, similar to that of Pothos, just cut at the node and you can propagate that in water. You can just stick it back into the soil if you want. Again, similar to Pothos, they're really great because they can climb or trail. The one thing with these is they do like a little bit more humidity. That's why I think this one is okay where it lives in the shower because it is getting humidity from daily showers and I think it likes that quite a lot. It helps it just grow a bit more happily. Overall, pretty good, easy care plant right here. So that's it. Those are my top five easy care plants. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up down below and comment other plenty things you'd like me to talk about and subscribe for more. Thank you so much and I'll see you next time. Bye. Further, farther, further. Which is it, further or farther? Further from the window, farther from the window.